Boop was in a cult. Spoiler paragraph? Spoiler paragraph. Rabbits are cute, soft and nice. They can jump real dang high and they are crazy little guys. Super delicate little dumbos though. They can't throw up, so you can't let them eat anything bad or they'll get a gut blockage and could die. Other dangerous things include the sniffles, deadly, bunny tornadoes, bunnies fighting each other, deadly, source, my rabbits, oop is you, throwaway 181718, tw, cult group therapy, camp, harassment, stalking, kidnapping, suicide, less than, mood, op is safe, less than, actual content spoiler, you've been warned, confirmed fake, less than, original on our confessions, January 29th, 2017, I was in a cult, firstly, apologies for my anonymity, I don't want this to get back to me, but I haven't told anyone about this, I need to get it off my chest, three years ago, when I was in college, I was suffering with severe depression. I took medication and attended therapy and group therapy. One day in my group therapy our therapist told us that there's a man here to talk to us. For reasons let's call him Bob. Bob was really energetic, really friendly and understanding. He spoke to us on our level. A bunch of vulnerable teenagers. He told us about a group therapy holiday. We go away over the summer holidays and do some cool things like rafting, rock climbing etc. He explained that it was completely free because the college would pay for us to go. And it lasts 5 weeks. Not many people were interested but I decided to ask him a few questions after the session. He told me that it was all about adventure. Making friends and having fun. Whilst continuing our therapy. I asked for some details off him but he didn't have a card. So he asked for mine. Stupidly I gave him my phone number, email address and home address. Later that night I was telling my parents about it. They seemed a little suspicious but I was trying to convince them. Whilst we were talking there was a knock at the door. It was Bob. My dad welcomed him in and he spoke to both of them explaining that it is good for my mental health. And it's also a lot of experiences. As well as completely free. After talking for a while my parents agreed that I could go. They filled out some paperwork and the next time I saw Bob was when I got on the coach. With lots of other people around my age. Bob was really enthusiastic and everyone looked excited. Albeit we were all having mental health issues. Bob explained that on our first day we would be doing an adventure course and building a raft. To help with teamwork with our fellow campers. We drove north to a walled off campsite. It was huge. As we got off the bus everyone had to go for a physical checkup. It was uncomfortable but I assumed it was to make sure we could take part in the events. The doctor was very thorough. When we left we couldn't find our suitcases. So we guessed they were brought to our rooms. But when we got to our rooms they weren't there either. I asked Bob and he said that we weren't allowed them. And we weren't allowed phones either. He asked for all our phones. Me and the other boys in my room refused but then he said that it was in the contract we signed. Reluctantly we all gave up all our possessions and he gave us these ugly tracksuits to wear. Because we didn't want our nice clothes to get dirty. We did some activities and they were fun. But then we all went for dinner. Before anyone started eating one of the group leaders said that we should all pray. I'm not religious and there was indication this was a religious group. So I was a bit confused. The group leader said we should say thanks to the gods for bringing us all together. I thought this was weird but assumed he was just being inclusive of everyone's religions. Later that night we all went to bed. Whilst we were in bed another group leader, let's call him Todd, came in and forced us all to stand up. We did. And he told us all off for sleeping in our boxers. He said that we should sleep in the tracksuits. We put our tracksuits on and as soon as he left we took them off again. It was summer after all. 
The next few days were pretty much the same. There were some fun activities but they were always shadowed by the group leaders acting weird and very strict. The boys and girls weren't allowed to talk to each other. When we went swimming we went in our tracksuits. We were really only allowed to talk during these activities. And every meal we had to pray. And the leaders always said things like, the gods will show us the way to the end. And honestly I was getting really creeped out. We did exciting activities but we also had to sum some more boring ones. Like meditation. They also told us that if we wanted to stay after the five weeks we could stay. And we could invite our families to live with us. One evening I asked Bob if I could call home. Just because I wanted to talk to my family. He said that my family was already told that I arrived safely and I'm happy. I tried to argue it but he was determined to not let me contact my family until the five weeks were up. I didn't know where they took my suitcase so I had no way of contacting them. That evening there was a campfire event. It was integrated with a group therapy session. I asked to use the bathroom in the main building and sneaked off. There was a small office that was empty and the lights were off. So I went in and used the phone to call my home phone. I told my mom what was happening and she said that they would come and get me straight away. In the back of the office was another room filled with suitcases. And a plastic box filled with phones. It took a while to find my phone but I stuck it in my pocket and then tried to look for my suitcase. Whilst I was looking Todd walked into the office and caught me. He practically dragged me out and sat me down in the hallway. Yelling at me for disobeying the rules. He said I was trying to get to my clothes. And it was a sin to be proud. Or something. He took me back to the group and told the other group leaders in front of everyone else. The group leaders were then angry at everyone and started going over the rules. We were all sent to bed without dinner. In bed I was on my phone. Texting my dad who said they were arriving now. I made sure the other boys didn't see I had my phone. Eventually my dad texted me saying something like, we are outside come now, so I pretty much jumped out of bed and ran out as fast as I could, past the group leaders who tried to stop me from running out the building, down the dirt road to my mom's car at the edge of the campsite, the leaders chasing me, my dad got out the car and locked me in the car with my mom, the group leaders were saying that I wasn't allowed to leave, that my parents signed a contract saying I can't leave until the five weeks are up. My dad refused and they tried to open the doors to get me out. Somehow my dad got back into the car and the doors were locked before they could get me out. And my parents drove me home. At home I told my parents everything. The next morning Todd and some other group leaders were at my front door. My dad told them to go away as they still tried to get me to come back to the camp. But they wouldn't leave without me. My dad called the police and the police escorted them away. We couldn't see them. But we knew they were watching. I pretty much didn't leave the house for the rest of the summer. And I was constantly peering out of my window. When college started again I left the house on my own for the first time to go get the bus. And as I walked down the road I could hear Todd and the others calling after me. I tried to run but there were around 10 of them. They surrounded me on the street. A few people from their houses heard the commotion and I yelled out for them to call the police. A few men came out and a fight started. I managed to run back to my house and lock myself in. The group leaders were arrested. But the next week a new group would show up in my area. Eventually we moved house. I stopped going to college and we had to start a whole new life. We don't live in witness protection. But we use fake identities to stop them from finding us. My parents were in contact with the college and the police. The college stopped funding the group and the police told us that they would start an investigation. And that Todd had killed himself whilst on bail. I don't know much more than that. But I hope that everyone in the group are safe. TL. Dear I escaped from a religious cult and they chased my family out of our home. 
comments. Oop. We gave the police all the information we could. Then agreed to have no part in the further investigation or any of the potential trails. I have no idea what has happened since the police investigation started. But hopefully it was taken down and the kids were okay. One user suggests Oop get a gun. Oop. Thanks for the support. Although I don't think we need to own a gun. It seems a bit excessive. Besides I don't think I can even get one in this country. Baby feet 1. My mom moved house. This is not in America. England? Australia? NZ? Oop. I didn't want to give away my location. But you're on the right track. Oop. Despite it being one of the scariest moments in my life. I think it did help my depression in one sense. It made me forget about the petty problems I had and realize there were worse things that could happen. Since we moved I feel a lot better mentally. And the support from my family has really helped. Backslash. Update. I never intended for this to be a potential way of exposing the group. And I didn't expect it to have such a huge and supportive reaction. As some of you have some questions I'd like to answer them. But still I wish to remain anonymous and not give away too much information. In response to all the questions about my phone, I didn't think it was worth mentioning that I turned it off before I handed it over. I haven't heard from any of the teenagers in the group since I left. And I haven't heard from the leaders since we moved house. There was an investigation a few years ago and I don't know what has happened to the group. Some of you have guessed my country. But still I don't want to give away too much information about where I live. The reason I won't expose the group is because it would be interfering with the police investigation. If it's still ongoing, and it would bring more attention to myself. When I said we changed identity, I mean we unofficially have started using a new surname. Only our closest relatives know this. We didn't take out a restraining order because it would only lead to court cases and a potential threat to our family. As explained above, a group of the leaders were arrested and charged with harassment. However more people turned up soon after. I am scared of even googling the group name. As I know that if they tracked me down it wouldn't end well. I hope you all understand the position I'm in and know that for my family and my own protection. I can't give more than that. I also wanted to say thanks for all the supportive messages. You guys really are the greatest community. Maybe one day there will be a complete resolution to this and I'll be able to tell the full story. To you all. OOP's final comment on the post. This is not true. I was part of a therapy group that specializes in helping teenagers with mental health problems. It was not a cult. Since then I have decided to rejoin the group. I will answer no further questions on this matter. Note. It was at this point that many folks began to speculate. OOP's story was theorized about across other platforms. Such as Nexpo's video on YouTube. May 31st. 2019. Readers and viewers speculated about which group Oop could have been referring to. Some believed it to be fake. Many called attention to that last comment of OOP's. Suggesting that the cult had found Oop and forcibly taken him into their group. Thus wishing to erase all evidence of anything afoul. Adding to this is OOP's post on R. Help asking how to delete a posted message. The mystery was left inconclusive for several years until, finally, you throwaway 181718 posted one last time. Final update. A self post. February 1st, 2023. Six years later. Closed. Hi. I think it's time for things to finally come to light. For the people that are still following this story. This will be my last post strap in because it's a long one. Back in 2011 I was studying at college in the UK. Like a lot of teens I was struggling with my mental health and I'm lucky that my college had a good support network in place for people like me. 
My college offered me private therapy and got in contact with my doctor to arrange medication. They really helped me. One day during a private therapy session I was told about a group that works with college students with mental health problems and was invited to attend a meeting to see what they do. There were about 20 students listening to these two men talking about an exciting opportunity for us, where they would take us to a camp where we could do adventurous things such as rock climbing and archery. But the main goal was to help us learn more about our mental health and through group sessions eventually work through our problems. I signed up. I gave them my contact details. But they said they would need parental permission before I go. I didn't realize that they would show up at my house that evening. I hadn't even had a chance to tell my parents about it. The two men were very persuasive and made the trip sound very enticing to me. But my parents had their doubts. My mom was very suspicious about them showing up to our house unannounced and the long contract they brought with them. My parents refused to let me go, saying, it sounds like a cult, and escorted the men out. And that was it. I had nothing more to do with them. I have no idea what happened at that group. But I doubt it was a cult. In fact it was probably a charity-funded group that had genuine and selfless intentions. But I understand my parents' skepticism. I don't know anyone who went to the camp and I can't remember the name of the organization. And I continued with my private therapy. Fast forward a few years and I'm sitting at my desk at my very first office job. Bored mindless and listening to a podcast series about creepy stuff that's happened around the world. One of the episodes was about Heaven's Gate, a famously tragic cult, where the founders sought out people who were marginalized lost, and had mental health issues to join their group. The story triggered some creativity inside me and lead me to our confessions. The story didn't take me long. I was just letting the creative juices flow as my co-workers looked on, probably thinking I was working on something really important. But yes, the truth is that it was just a spooky story with far too many inconsistencies. This wasn't the first fictional story I posted on Reddit. I found a lot of enjoyment writing weird posts and watching the commenters try to decipher it. One of my personal favorites was a story from the perspective of an American lady convinced that her vegan neighbors were witches. None of these posts gained a lot of attention. And I didn't mind. I just enjoyed the writing. About a week after the original post, I was watching a YouTube video about Reddit mysteries. This obviously inspired me to ignore my work and try to flesh out this cult story. The intention behind the creepy update was that the cult leaders had somehow gained access to my account and were desperately trying to get rid of the evidence. I wasn't expecting this update to bring as much attention to my story as it did. Reading through all of these theories was really enjoyable for me. Even if half of the commenters knew it was fake, there were a few people that seemed to really enjoy digging into the story. And it made me feel happy that I provided them with something they could try to figure out. A few more years later, one night, I got into bed and opened up YouTube on my phone. I can't explain the feeling of seeing my stupid story being the focus of one of my favorite YouTubers. Nightmare Expo. I was overwhelmed with joy that he had decided to use my story for one of his videos. The feeling was remarkable. With this video came a lot more attention and a lot more theories. My biggest regret is that I didn't make up a name for this cult, because I feel bad that negative. Attention was being put on random organizations because of this. I tried to be vague to avoid people pointing fingers of who could be behind the cult. And that was pretty much the height of this story. A silly fictional story that I wrote at my desk instead of doing work. Throughout the years since I've logged into this account and read through the direct messages and checked the new comments under Nexpo's video, I had a lot of fun reading all of your theories and have a lot of love for those who reached out in 
an effort to help this supposed troubled person. I understand a lot of people were annoyed because they could tell the story was fake. But I still hope that the people who took time to work together and investigate this story had some fun too. I've been part of online communities investigating some internet mysteries and it's where I've met some close friends. So that leads us up to now and why I've decided to close this story. The initial intention was to let it fade into nothingness like most other Reddit mysteries. But something changed. About a year ago I got some bad news from my doctor. Two months ago I was told that the treatment wasn't working. I haven't got long left. Since I was a teenager I've always had a fascination with all things spooky. This fascination has got me through some tough times. Especially recently when I've needed distractions from the real world. I've spent countless hours in hospitals and clinics investigating online mysteries and feeding my obsession of the weird and wonderful. I've also spent a lot of time reading through theories about my story and I'm happy that some of you found it interesting. But I couldn't take this with me to the grave. Along with letters from my family and friends. I had to leave one for you guys too. To the people at our confessions and our RBI. To Nightmare Expo and his fans. And to everyone who spent some time exploring this story. Thank you. I hope you guys can keep internet mysteries alive. Keep investigating and keep making these online communities going. Please remember to do what you enjoy doing. Like I did while you have the time love throwaway 181718 iam not oop i have to assume their impending death is also not true why wouldn't they put it on no sleep or whatever rather than trying to convince people it was real i don't get what the point was Okay not about the post but op I like your bunny fact and that the source is your own bunnies. Looking back at the OOP's post history. The final update seemed to have happened 5 months ago. Which would make the year be 2023 not 2021. About a year ago I got some bad news from my doctor. Two months ago I was told that the treatment wasn't working. I haven't got long left. Sure you did buddy. Sure you did. Is anything more annoying than a compulsive liar who can't resist putting a new one in his confession about the last one? I know I've got the benefit of hindsight here. But I'm kinda surprised people actually believed this was real at all. It reads more like a creepypasta than anything resembling a real life cult. Especially with the dramatic escape and praying to the gods. As a former vengeance demon, I'm really uncomfortable with the sudden uptick in probunny propaganda lately in this group. I haven't got long left. Face with rolling eyes. TW. Mentions of suicide. Honestly. The only way he could have gotten away with being such a piss poor writer is to pass this off as real. Readers will let you get away with a lot more if they think you're telling a true story. And I guess it's easier to lie for attention than to hone your skills and post to art, no sleep. Making up stuff about a serious issue. Dot but it was all fun cause I had fun. Pathetic. Sometimes I upvote the post, sometimes it's the spoiler paragraph. Today is spoilers. I can't be the only one that wants the next post on the account to be from OOP's parents. Claiming that the cult showed up and took him. Cutest spoiler paragraph though. That took a left turn and I'm here for it. Fuck people who trick others like this. Wait, Nexpo's full channel name is Nightmare Expo? Never knew that. How very odd. I recently watched the story on Nightmare Expo. I thought it sounded familiar when I started to read it. 
This is the sort of thing that African parents warn their kids about and then use to justify keeping them on a short leash open mouth smile. These men want you to go to camp for five weeks? They're probably trying to harvest your organs or something. Nope. You're not going. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.